Hey guys, today we're going to be diving into the details of how you can actually accelerate your results in less time. So these are strategies that I've been using um, for myself because my wedding is coming up in like five days, not even five days, like three days or four days now. <laughs> Nuts. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys these expert tips that you can use to help build upon the results that you already have and get results faster. Um, so these are tips that you can use. You don't necessarily have to be implementing these, but if you are looking to take your results to the next level, if you're looking to just, um, you know, accelerate the process, these are really, really great tools that you can use to help speed up that process. So we have, thankfully, the internet is working today. We actually have tech again. Um, so this is the third week of the fall intermittent fasting challenge. So I will be having another challenge coming up really soon. So if you guys haven't joined in um, during this one, you want to join in during the next one, it's been a lot of fun. Um, you guys can just make sure to sign up for the free email newsletter I have down description below. It's where all of the announcements are going to be first. So make sure you check that out. Um, but otherwise, it's going to be a really, really fun next challenge. A lot of really exciting things planned. I kind of like did a sneak peek yesterday on my Instagram account of what's coming. So really, really excited for what's to come. But if you guys are brand new, if I'm just meeting you for the first time, um, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition, human performance. I love to help men and women around the world achieve their goals while eating foods they love and not being hungry in the process. So I'm really proud of the a and peeps and what they have achieved already. And I'm really excited for this next week. I mean, for multiple reasons, but let's just dive straight into the tips now um, with the very first tip. So this one is, oh, and by the way, guys, if you have questions throughout this, make sure to throw them in the chat. And if you're tuning in after the live stream, throw them into the comments after as well. And I'll be answering questions throughout. So um, the first tip is to make sure that you're actually pairing your intermittent fasting if you're using it, um, I'm assuming if you're watching my channel, you probably are, or to some degree, uh, make sure that you're pairing intermittent fasting with strength training. And this doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, like last week's live stream where we talk about building muscles like Arnold, but just some type of challenge to your muscles. We talk so much about walking, and that will be something we discuss a little bit later on as well. Um, but adding in strength training of some sort or some type of weight-bearing exercise can really help to accelerate your results. There's even been studies where they pair intermittent fasting with exercise, and they find that the results are accelerated. This is due to the fact that intermittent fasting on its own is already going to be really helpful for improving insulin sensitivity, which makes it easier for the body to burn fat as fuel. But then when you also add in strength training, it helps to further enhance that because when you do strength training, um, that also helps to helps to improve insulin sensitivity. The mechanism behind it, if you guys are curious on that, is because uh, when your muscles are contracting, it helps to absorb excess glucose from the blood supply. So you don't need to pump out as much insulin in response to that glucose. So it helps to make your body more insulin sensitive by not needing as much insulin in order to help bring that glucose under control. So um, making sure that you're pairing that intermittent fasting with some type of strength training if you want to level up your results from there. Definitely, if you are brand new, if this is your first week using intermittent fasting, I wouldn't recommend starting off right away with using some type of strength training because you want to make sure your body gets used to using fat as fuel. But there have actually been um, studies that show the longer you use intermittent fasting, the better your muscles get at using fat as fuel and therefore even at higher intensities. So even with high intense or high intensity interval training or HIIT, you can even still use fat as fuel to some degree as well, the longer you have switched over with using intermittent fasting and addressing your meals. So if you are brand new, you might wanna hold off on this one for the first week or two until you get used to it, um, used to using fat as fuel with intermittent fasting. But otherwise, if you have been using intermittent fasting for a while, uh, then this is a really great tool to take it to the next level. So this is why in the 21 day um, intermittent fasting program, I do have those strength training options that you can do. You can see one of the pictures there. Uh, they're really great workouts you can use to scale up and add in um, exercise or add in weights, depending on where you're at in your exercise journey. You can start with a lower weight and then build up from there. That's the main reason why there is strength training involved in the 21 day intermittent fasting program, because it is so useful for helping to accelerate your results. And just strength training in general is really great for longevity, helping to protect your um, your bone mass and helping to prevent osteoporosis, obviously maintaining muscle mass as well. And just long term, it's really great to help improve insulin sensitivity because as we age, insulin resistance tends to go up. 
So that's a really great first tip to be using if you are um, looking to accelerate your results, especially if you're using intermittent fasting, is to make sure that you are adding in strength training to some degree, but work with where your body's at first. All right, so the next tip here we have is to, it's not tip number one, it's tip number two, <laughs> is to remove all added sugars. So this is really important if you are looking to really accelerate your results. And it's not that you have to do this forever. Uh, you can just even for a shorter period of time to help just get things moving in the direction that you want, remove all those added sugars. Obviously, the longer that you can remove those added sugars, the better. Um, added sugars are really insulin spiking. So the higher we're spiking insulin, the, the harder it is for our body to tap back into fat burning. So added sugars can even include things that you might not think of. So you can see here, um, fruit juices is a really common one that's added in as like a sneaky added sugar where, you know, they don't technically have to say it's an added sugar, but it is just a pure sugar source at that point. In fact, it's really high in fructose, which is really, um, has a big role in something called de novo lipogenesis, which is a big fancy word that just means new fat creation. So specifically fructose is really um, spiking of that. It can really turn that on. So obviously if you are looking to tap more into fat burning, you wanna make sure that you aren't having as much of those high concentrated sources of fructose either. So this includes fruit juices, dry fruit is a big one. So if you're using dates, for example, that's a, a sneaky one that tends to go you know, under the radar. Uh, dates are going to also be really high in sugar. I can't remember the specific amount. Um, it might be about, it depends on the size of the date, but they are a lot more packed in sugar than you think. I think one date has about 14 grams of sugar. I'm not quite sure on that, but it is very rich in sugar. Uh, coconut sugar, agave, honey, maple syrup. These are all ones that tend to get like a weird health halo where we assume that they must be better. You know, they, to some degree, can be a little bit better than some other sugars, but they are still added sugars. So especially agave, agave is actually a really highly processed sugar. Um, you, you don't just, it got a, a really clever marketing campaign when it first came out or when people first started really using it by calling it agave nectar. We think of like, we're just tapping into agave and the agave nectar is spilling out because that word kind of implies that. Not the case. There's actually a lot of processing that goes involved, it, it go, that goes into making um, agave into you know, sugar that you would use. So all of these are added sugars. And just by removing those alone, you know, you're not really changing much of your meals itself. You're just removing the actual added sugars can really help to make sure that you're not going to be excessively spiking insulin um, and help with your body being easier, able to tap into fat burning. Now you'll see that I put possibly stevia or monk fruit. I know Katie's in the chat right now. I actually interviewed Katie, um, one of the AM peeps about her experience of how removing stevia and monk fruit from her diet really helped her to achieve those last you know, five pounds of her weight loss goal. Um, some people are responsive to these types of sugars like stevia monk fruit, where technically they're not a sugar. Technically they shouldn't have um, any type of insulin response, but some people seem to be more sensitive to it. And especially if you're having a lot of those, um, you know, like keto treats where you know, they have uh, monk fruit, erythritol, uh, stevia, or if you're having the keto cookies or whatever it might be, these can still be a problem for some people. So if you're noticing that you are having issues um, where you aren't able to achieve the last like five to 10 pounds, for example, you can experiment with removing stevia monk fruit and see how your body responds. In fact, this is why so many people see so many great results, even with just the seven day intermittent fasting detox. I, I know a lot of people in the chat right now have used it as well, but that's a really great step within the detox is just removing all added sugars. So I do have that link down description below if you guys want to check that out, especially if you are looking for something for about seven days to follow to help just reboot your system. Removing all added sugars is one major component of that. So you can check out some other additional recipes with there, in there too. Um, yeah, right there. So sugar-free recipes that you guys can check out in the seven day detox link down description below. If you guys want to check that out, that's a really great resource. If you are looking to actually have food that tastes good <laughs> while removing sugar in the process. So that's one major step of the seven day detox. So the next thing here, the third tip is to walk more. Now, if you are not new to my channel, this is probably sounding really redundant, but 
I want you to really think about what your walking schedule has been and think about how you can start to incorporate not just longer walks, but how you can actually add in more walking throughout the day. So you can see on here, let me bring that up a little bit easier. All right. So we already know that exercise is really important for improving insulin sensitivity. And so strength training is a huge component. That was the first major tip. If you're just tuning in right now, then you can just go back and check out um, the first tip there on where we talk about strength training. But walking is a form of exercise. You are still challenging your muscles. You're still moving your um, body, which muscles are required in order to do that. So by adding in more walking throughout the day, even if it is just for five or 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, even if it's just one to five minutes every hour just to get up and get moving, that really helps to break up the sedentary moments throughout the day especially if you are working where you are sitting at a computer all day, this can really help to break up those sedentary moments and really help to just get your muscles activated every hour or so. So this is why, um, and also you can see on there, I put keeps energy levels high. The longer we're sitting, the less our body is really able to um, be activating a lot of those fat burning mechanisms. Helps it, it, by moving, it actually can help to stimulate energy production, help to make us feel more energized as well. So ideally every hour would be a goal to get some movement in. I did do a video, um, I think it was last week, last Tuesday on the ideal walking schedule. So especially if you are looking to really accelerate your results, you can check that out. If you're, if you guys are watching the replay of this video after um, I've gone live, I'll put it linked down description below so you guys can check it out. Um, but ideally if we can just get in walking every hour, and this is where I like to use a Fitbit. So I talked a little bit about Fitbits or some type of step tracker in the past. I know that the, I believe the Apple Watch does this too, where it can remind you every hour to move if you haven't hit a certain amount of step goals. So with the Fitbit, I know it does for, I think 250 steps that you have to get every hour. So it literally is like one to two minutes of walking every hour, but that in itself can really help to break up those sedentary moments, help to keep the body more insulin sensitive throughout the day, and just build upon the results that you're doing with your intermittent fasting schedule, with the A and nutrient timing, and with your strength training earlier on. So remember, these are the goals um, that you can use, or these are the strategies you can use to build upon the progress. If you are looking to build upon what you've already achieved, these are really amazing next level or next step walking fun uh, strategies that you can use in order to help accelerate that progress. All of these are with the goal and the intention of helping to keep the body more insulin sensitive, because if we can keep the body more insulin sensitive, the easier it is to use fat as fuel. So I also have a recommendation on here to actually set a step goal. Now, it doesn't have to be an insane high step goal, but more than what you already are at. So I, um, my my current step goal, which I've actually been doing for the past, it's been like a month and a half, is 15,000 steps a day, which sounds like a lot. But when you're actually getting up and moving every hour, even for that one to two minutes, it can actually be, be fairly um, easy to get in. So if you can just look at your current step goal or current steps, if you have some type of step tracker, if you're at like 6,000 steps, aim for 10,000. That extra 4,000 steps can really make a difference. If you're at 10,000, try getting 12 or 14. Just give yourself an extra goal to hit where you are going to be moving more frequently throughout the day. Um, and the step trackers where it reminds you can definitely really help if you do need um, just that reminder to get up and get moving. Okay. As always, have my notes so I don't go too far off track. You guys know I can get a little nerdy with the descriptions. All right. So the next, oh, and question for you guys. What is your step goal? What type of step goal have you been doing? I know I shared on Instagram, which if you guys don't follow me, definitely check it out. I share a lot of sneak peek information on there and some recipes too. Um, just autumn L underscore nutrition, L like E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Yeah. Uh, but we have, um, I was sharing my own step goal on there about a month and a half ago for leading up to my wedding. So I would feel my best and using these same strategies I'm sharing with you guys today um, to feel my best on my wedding, which is this Friday. Uh, but my current step goal has been 15,000. I've been, I think every day, been able to hit that um, for the last month and a half, which, you know, some days were a little bit more difficult than others. But let's see what some of your guys' step goals are. You can let me know in the chat. All right. Crystal says 10,000 is my goal, but my minimum is 7,000. Great job. Oh, awesome. So I did 11K steps every day of September for prostate cancer charity. That's great. All right. 
Yeah, so this is a good point. Anne said my step goal only 5,000 because of bad knee. It used to be 10,000. You got to work where your body's at. So if that's where you are able to go, then that's perfectly fine. It's just going to the point of where your body can accept that level of exercise. One thing you might want to look out for, especially if you um, do have some type of injury that limits how much activity you can get is getting into the pool, getting some type of either swimming or even walking in the pool can be helpful. Um, if you have some type of injury, just check with your PT to see to what degree you can incorporate that. But generally um, using some type of pool exercises are a great way to have less impact on your joints while still being able to get activity in. Julissa says 14,000 steps and Mary says 15,000. All right. Great job. Oh, wow. Mandy minus 20,000, but I have an Apple watch. Probably 15,000 is what I get. 15,000 is still really great. That was my goal this whole month. So that's really great. Okay. So let's go on to this next tip. So this is the fourth really important tip here, which remember guys, make sure to throw um, your questions in the chat and I'll be getting to those at the end. So the fourth tip is to actually prioritize your sleep. So this is one that I've noticed, um, especially a lot of a and peeps who have been following my channel for a while, maybe know this to be true, but aren't actually implementing the tips and strategies. Sometimes we can know something logically, but not know it deep down that it'll actually help us. So we don't usually put in that effort to make those changes, especially to something like a habit for bedtime where it can be a little difficult to change us. Um, but the reason why this is really important if you are looking to accelerate your results is because a lot of hormonal changes when um, a lot of hormonal changes happen when you get poor sleep. So you can see that I put on here, poor sleep increases hunger. So it actually does this by increasing our hunger hormone ghrelin. So obviously, if you're going to be more hungry, especially with the increase in ghrelin, it tends to lead to sugar cravings. Those sugar cravings will lead to consuming sugar and then therefore spiking insulin. Obviously not what we want. Um, also increases cortisol levels the next day. Likely this happens is because um, cortisol helps to create energy within the body to get out of a, a state of um, you know fight or flight state. So when we have poor sleep, we don't have necessarily that energy that we need for the day. So that's where cortisol can help us in that situation. But from a weight loss perspective, consistently high levels of cortisol have been found to lead to weight gain around the belly. So especially if you have um, difficulties losing weight around the belly, you really want to be taking a look at your sleep and sleep quality. And then even sleep, poor sleep does lead to um, increased insulin resistance the very next day after a night of poor sleep. This is because cortisol does tend to go higher. And cortisol, when you have higher levels of cortisol, it causes that direct insulin resistance to go up. They kind of counter each other. So when cortisol is high, insulin resistance is going to be higher as well. So insulin resistance, the more insulin resistant you are, means the less insulin sensitive you are opposite spectrums. And when with fat loss specifically, tapping into fat burning as the goal, we want to have insulin sensitivity be the goal. Anything that pushes us in the direction of insulin resistance is going to work against that goal. So this is where sleep is going to be very, very important. So I have, um, let me make this a little bigger for you guys. I have a few different really important just huge steps that you can do. If you can get these down consistently, this will really help make a big difference in the quality of sleep that you're getting and the consistency is what really matters. So the no tech time is a huge rule that I personally follow and I notice this makes all the difference. This is the, the most important one, but this just means not looking at your phone, your laptop, your TV, any type of tech that 30 to 60 minutes before bed, ideally 60 minutes is what I found is a, a much better way to get consistent results. But if you are used to falling asleep to some type of um, you know, show or on your phone or whatever it might be, starting off with 30 minutes is a good place to start. At least you are getting that gap. Reason why this is really important is because when your eyes are exposed to this blue light, and I have found that blue light blocking glasses can't really counter this effect. But when your eyes are exposed to light, it does tell the body that it's daytime. And so our body responds by typically keeping melatonin, our sleep hormone, from rising. So by having the no tech time, getting your eyes exposed to just that natural darkness that's going on outside, this can help to naturally allow melatonin to start being produced. So it's a really, really important one, especially if you find that maybe you can fall asleep easily, but you wake up throughout the night. Typically, it's going to be because of that um, you know, light exposure to the eyes that you weren't able to get that melatonin significantly higher. 
Uh, and that's that that in itself is a huge one. If you can't incorporate the next two, I would really recommend that you at least get the no tech time 30 to 60 minutes before bed. So now the next one is a really great one. It's magnesium. So incorporating some type of magnesium supplement, there shouldn't, there's most medication shouldn't be an issue on contrary, um, you know, working against this. So with magnesium, if you are taking medications, just make sure it's not going to be an issue with any of the um, medications that you're taking. But magnesium is a natural um, mineral. It's something that we do need to be getting in every day from our food. Most people aren't getting enough. And you'll know that you're not getting enough if you do have something like muscle cramps after workouts. It's typically an issue of magnesium. But magnesium can help to get us in that relaxed state, help to um, get the help to naturally produce, not produce, but helps the body to naturally produce the uh, melatonin that is needed for that high quality deep sleep. So that on top of the tech time can really help. I have a whole video on that as well. All if you're watching this after the live stream, I'll have it linked up here somewhere. Uh, but otherwise also have it in the description below. But if you're watching this live right now, just type Autumn Bates Magnesium. And I have a whole, I think like four minute video, very to the point on how you can incorporate magnesium into your life. Now, this last one is one that I've been sharing more recently. Um, and it is extremely helpful, especially for exposing your eyes to that darkness to help the body naturally start producing melatonin. And that's an evening walk. So if you have a dog and you need to go on a walk anyway, Getting outside right before bed during that no tech time can help to naturally expose your eyes to some type of darkness and tell your body that it is nighttime and that it is time to go to sleep. So this is where um, going on an evening walk help decrease the stress levels, uh, as we talk about with um, walking in general, can be really helpful for that. So obviously help to wind down, but also help to naturally produce um, melatonin as well. So all of those are really great first steps. If you can just consistently get the first one in of the no tech time, that in itself can make a huge impact on the quality of sleep that you're getting. Um, something that consistently I've seen time and time again with my clients and the AM peeps, when they actually take that step seriously, they really see their quality of sleep start to improve. Okay, now, if you do have, and I'm going to be answering questions at the end of this, but if you do have that type of goal in mind where you are looking for a way to accelerate the results, especially with decreasing the sugar intake or removing it altogether, hi, I could not recommend the seven day detox further. A big step within that is removing added sugars and it takes you step by step through that process and helps you to actually have meals that taste good alongside with that. So a lot of a and use that to see amazing results, especially after they had maybe um, a higher uh, refined carbohydrate, higher sugar intake over the last week or so, and they need something to just get back on track. Or if you are looking to start intermittent fasting, this is where I always recommend starting because you really need to address your food first to see significant progress with intermittent fasting. So I'll have that link down in the description below so you guys can check it out. But that in itself can really help to make some great progress by um, addressing just the added sugars alone can really make a big impact. So question, guys, um, which of the tips is it that you feel that you need to start incorporating or that you have started to incorporate and have noticed some really great results? I know that I've seen some of the um, AM peeps just talk about how incorporating the strength training alone has really helped to accelerate their results. Um, and of course, the added sugar is huge. So let me know in the comments which tip it is that you think you're going to start incorporating first or which you feel like you need to. Maybe sleep. I mean, sleep is a huge one that a lot of people do need to um, address a little bit more. Uh, most Americans especially are not getting great sleep. Okay, I'm going to be looking through and answering some questions now. So just throw them in the chat. Um, all right, so I see Sham N says, Hi, Autumn, does keto coffee break a fast? Really depends on the type of uh, keto coffee or the type of fasting that you're using. So there's two main different types of fasting. I mean, two main subcategories of fasting, rather. There's the true fast and then the fasting mimicking. So with the true fast, you're only having water. Maybe you're having some unsweetened um, coffee or tea and some electrolytes. But other than that, that's all you can have with the true fast. There's a reason why you might want to do that, especially if you're especially looking to accelerate gut healing benefits with intermittent fasting. That's a great time to be using that true fast versus the fasting mimicking where you're really focused on keeping insulin from spiking so that you want to keep your body in that fat burning state. You're automatically doing that with the true fast, 
but you can still do that with a fasting mimicking state as well. And that's where you're only consuming some type of fat during that fasted period. So that's where something like keto coffee can be a great tool, especially if you're brand new to intermittent fasting and you find that you're experiencing a little bit of hunger during that fasting period, having keto coffee can make it so it's a lot easier of a transition. So I actually have a whole blog post on this, on what breaks a fast and um, breaking it down between the true fast versus the fasting mimicking. So you guys can check that out. It's on my blog, autumnmalnutrition.com. So again, autumn and then E-L-L-E nutrition.com. It's also linked down description below. So you guys can check that out. Um, but really great resources on my blog. Whenever you're wondering, does toothpaste break a fast or is this apple cider vinegar going to make me not see results with my fasting period? I have pretty much all of the most common ingredients that you might ask a question about on if it breaks fast on my blog. So I have a whole category that's does it break a fast on my blog and it goes over each of those. I think I have like 60 or something different blog posts on different ingredients. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Really great resource. Okay. This is a great question. So Matt and Barb for no tech time. What about reading a paper book? This is great. In fact, this is something I highly recommend. One thing I would caution is reading um, a type of book that is easy to get sucked into. So maybe looking for one that doesn't get you easily sucked into it and doesn't, um, you know, like for a while I was rereading the Harry Potter series and it's so easy to read for like two hours on that and not realize it's been two hours. So I would recommend not reading something that is easy to get sucked into like Harry Potter in my instance. Um, but yeah, paper books are great because you're not looking directly into a light. In fact, I recommend that over a Kindle. So Louisa, uh, what kind of magnesium? I go really into detail on that with the um, video I mentioned. So just type Autumn Bates Magnesium on YouTube. It'll pop right up. And then Marissa or Marissa Ariana. Uh, do you have tips for better quality sleep for us night shifters since we don't have the evening walk option? already the blackout curtains. If you have the blackout curtains, great option because that natural darkness or the darkness rather is something that you do want. You can take a look at the no tech time and um, that's a big one. And then also still the magnesium can be helpful. I have a video that I did if you're using intermittent fasting as well. Um, I have a video I did with a nurse who has those night shifts as well. So you can check that out. I, she shared her tips on what she uses. If you type autumn Bates shift work, I think is um, an easy way to find it on YouTube. It's a really great way to find her tips that she shares as a nurse using intermittent fasting. All right. Yeah. So Anne says, I sit outside since an evening walk isn't much of an option for me. That's also a great option as well. So if um, for whatever reason you don't feel comfortable walking around at night um, in your neighborhood or, or wherever you are, you can sit even outside in the darkness um, and hang out outside for a little bit, even if it's just five minutes. It's all just about getting your eyes exposed to that darkness and letting your body know it's nighttime. Honey Gigi, hi, is it safe to do intermittent fasting daily? Depends on how you're using it. So a lot of the research around women um, having, or rather um, the research saying that women shouldn't use intermittent fasting daily comes from the alternate day fasting. So alternate day fasting is where you're fasting for one complete day and then you're not fasting on the next day. So you're not getting all of your nutrient needs every other day. So you're constantly in this semi-starvation state by not getting all of your nutrient needs. I never recommend alternate day fasting for, especially for women, but for that purpose, because you want to make sure you're still getting in your nutrient needs. But this is also why constantly restricting your calories as a woman isn't necessarily a good idea either, which is why I don't recommend um, counting calories because women are so sensitive to that state of semi-starvation and calorie restriction. With intermittent fasting that's time restricted, where you're looking at an eating window each day, you're just, you're not eating less, you're eating less often. And that is the big difference. It's not focused on restriction. It's fo focused on um, getting your meals to a certain time of the day, not eating all throughout the day. A lot of hormonal differences happen there. I've talked a lot about this in a lot of videos. I have one where I specifically go over all the um, studies on women in intermittent fasting. Um, if you check out, just type Autumn Bates, women fasting that might pop up um, right away, but go into the studies there that you can check out. Okay. Acela, can you, um, 
Can you have your apple cider vinegar sipper with sparkling water or does that break a fast? Yeah, you can totally have it with sparkling water. Sparkling water will not break a fast. So it's a good option. And apple cider vinegar does not break a fast either. Again, I actually have a post on sparkling water and apple cider vinegar um, both separately on my blog under that does it break a fast section. So highly recommend just even if you keep like that tab open on your phone at all times. So you can always just you know swipe through and find the answers for that definitely check out that section on my blog. So automelnutrition.com, the blog section. And then there's a topic that says, does it break a fast? Whole section on a ton of different articles to tell you exactly what breaks a fast and what doesn't. Okay. Good question. So A and J love. I have PCOS and I struggle with overeating and snacking. So it's a challenge I'm willing to take. That's fantastic. Great. Yeah. Um, you, if you have an issue with snacking and if you find that it's difficult to not snack, I would make sure that you're addressing your protein first because protein is the most satiating um, macronutrient source. So you want to make sure you're getting enough protein to actually tell your body you're full and satisfied. We often think that snacking or hunger is a form of discipline. There's a huge physiological component to it that most people are not addressing because especially what I found, most women are not getting nearly enough protein for their needs. So if you can address the physiological form, you can't discount the fact that there is definitely a, a sense of um, boredom eating too. But if you uh, at least address the physiological form of making sure you have enough uh, protein and fat, both needed for satiety and feeling full and satisfied, can make things so much easier for not snacking um, because your body is full and satisfied. So it's a really good one to check out. Um, I have a protein, like how to calculate your protein needs, a video on that that you can check out if you haven't seen that before. It's like a three minute video on how to calculate your protein needs. Just type Autumn Bates protein. It'll also come right up. All right. It's a good question. So Juliana says, I've tried the no tech time and I tracked my sleep and it was worse after is this normal and I use magnesium. Um, so I would be curious on how long you did this for. Some people do have a bit of a transition because, uh, as I mentioned, I, I personally used to do this as well. I used to have to watch the same movie every night before bed to help get out of my own mind from an anxiety um, point of view in order to even fall asleep. And when I first transitioned away from not watching um, something before bed, it did take a bit of a transition period because now I had to figure out a way to get out of my own head and actually fall asleep and get my body to that rested place. You might want to try reading. That would be a really good tool that I found that really useful. Um, reading a physical book uh, or that nighttime evening walk can also really help. Azella, can I do two really big meals? I do an 18 hour fast. So I have a six hour eating window. Yes, you can, but make sure you address your protein. Um, oftentimes people think longer is better with fasting. And if you saw my most recent video on 10 things I wish that I knew before I started intermittent fasting, that's a really big one and it can really derail your results. Longer is not always better with intermittent fasting because it can make it so you aren't getting enough of your nutrient needs. It can lead to hunger, it can lead to not getting enough protein and as a result, muscle wasting. Um, so make sure that you're actually taking a look at that. I have, um, like I mentioned, that protein video. I also have a video where I say uh, two meals versus three meals. I'm not sure on the exact title, but if you type Autumn Bates two or three meals, that also might pop right up. Uh, but I go over what to look out for, for if you are doing two meals a day. Yeah, Katie. So journaling for brain dump is really helpful sometimes too before bed. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great tool as well just to get out of your own head and, and help to fall asleep. Okay, I'm going to scroll back and try and find some other questions that I might have missed earlier. All right, Marilyn started swimming once a week and was getting bad calf cramps while swimming. I've upped my element electrolytes intake on swim days and it's been a lifesaver. Well, a calf saver. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, Element is, a, is an electrolyte company that I really love and it's actually used for intermittent fasting specifically designed around that as well. Um, so you get enough sodium and magnesium. So congrats. Um, JC, can you drink keto coffee before your morning walk? You can. I mean, this is a personal preference. There are things to consider, though. Um, this is really just nitpicky if you want to further optimize your results. I always like to go in a complete 
walking rather. I like to do walking in a completely fasted state so that you get a little bit of that true fast where your body is just in that true fast state. You get that migrating motor complex stimulated. We're getting a little bit into a separate topic here for <laughs> migrating motor complex, but more of that gut healing aspect um, of intermittent fasting. So I like to do that in a completely fasted state for that reason. And then once I get back after my workout, also in a completely fasted state, having my coffee, my keto coffee then. So this is really, I mean, if you find that you can't go out for the walk without having coffee, I'd rather you have the coffee and be able to get out walking. But if you are a little bit more flexible on when you can have it, if you want the perks of a true fast and then to have your keto coffee, it's a great thing you can do as well. So David says he's going to reincorporate more walking. That's fantastic. And Kitty, sleep for me. Yes, I think we all could improve our sleep a little bit more. Yeah, Amanda, walking more throughout the day is a big goal for me. Yeah, that's that's a big one where a lot of us can um, be incorporating the morning walk or maybe even incorporating the evening walk and maybe even a lunchtime walk. But we are very um, sedentary throughout the day and have like four hour gaps or even longer where we're just sitting. So getting up every hour can really make a big difference. Lucky Charms 91, what's the best way to recover from a cheap weekend? So I have, first of all, I have a really great video on how to, um, you know, best optimize the cheat or treat, like I like to call it, meal. I really recommend you check that out first. And I also have another video on how to recover a 24 hour, I think it's called like 24 hour cheat day recovery, something like that. Though they're both pretty um, recent videos of mine, but those two videos I'd highly recommend you check out because the one tells you exactly how to um, address the, the cheat or treat days so you can feel better the next day and also still see results while incorporating a treat meal. Um, and then the next one tells you how to recover as well. So definitely recommend you check both of those out. Yeah, so Katie said, also not wearing my Fitbit helps sleep a ton from EMF and light exposure from movement. I was shocked. Yeah, I don't wear my Fitbit when I sleep for that exact reason. I'm not as sensitive to the, the light, um, seeing the light. My fiance is. So that definitely was a, a huge thing for him when I um, stopped wearing my Fitbit to sleep. But even EMFs, which can be released from Fitbits, can be absorbed in a similar fashion as light and still affect the body and sleep in a similar way. So I would recommend if you have a some type of sleep tracker that does emit EMF, you wanna take that off at night as well to help further. Okay, I'm gonna scroll back more to the beginning and see if I missed any. Steve says, I've been fasting for almost two years, mostly 19.5 over the last few months. I've been stagnant. I'm thinking of taking a break, thoughts. Yeah. Um, it's not the fasting period. Very likely it's not the fasting period that's causing issues. It's it's likely what you're eating during the eating window that's causing you to plateau. Um, especially, first of all, if you're not getting enough protein or if you're eating overly insulin spiking foods during the fasting or during the eating window. I know there's a big trend for a long time with intermittent fasting where people were told that you can eat whatever you want during the fasting period and see results. That's only true if you are looking at it from a calorie restrictive perspective and not the hormonal perspective. Eventually, if you're just treating it purely from the calorie restrictive perspective, you're going to get the same problems as calorie restriction where there is a decrease in BMR and where you get that weight loss plateau. So definitely recommend um, you check out that protein video. I've mentioned a few times type Autumn Bates protein. I have so many videos on intermittent fasting mistakes and what to look out for with your eating window. You can check out the complete intermittent fasting bundle where I actually have meals and strategies you can use. I'll, I have that link down description below. Um, so you can address your eating window. That is why I created that program because I saw so many people using intermittent fasting wrong because they were just addressing fasting and then eating whatever, you know, whatever insulin spiking food they wanted and not feeling as great or not seeing the progress they wanted. So definitely check those videos out, those resources, check out the program if you want more step-by-step -step, um, details there. Hi, Lisa from Uganda. <laughs> okay, let me scroll back down. Yeah, so 
Marion, this is a really great question. Um, how about a walk after just a black coffee? Would I still lose those perks? So black coffee will still keep you in that true fasting period if you're just having black coffee, no stevia or monk fruit. So you can do that if you need to have a little bit of coffee before you go out for a walk um, and still get more of that true fast perks. It's a little iffy on if it will stop the migrating motor complex perks. I think that's really dependent on each person. Some people don't see the gut healing perks with um, having coffee during the fast and some do. So you can test that out and see how you feel with that. Okay. So Tania says, I was wondering if it is possible to eat vegan while doing intermittent fasting. Some people say it's hard to get all the nutrients. Is your program also vegan friendly? Um, yeah. So first of all, I do have a ton of plant-based, pretty much all the recipes have plant-based swaps within them. So you can check that out. Um, also link down description below. I wanted to make sure that everyone with all different type of um, dietary preferences could have the option to still use intermittent fasting the right way. So I do have those um, swaps in there on, on how you can make it plant-based friendly too. Uh, but yeah, it, on ter in the terms of if you can use um, a vegan protocol with intermittent fasting, you can. However, you do need to be extra aware of the protein intake. As I mentioned already, even if someone is eating animal-based proteins, still easy to under-consume. So you do want to make sure that you are optimizing with those plant-based proteins. Hemp seeds is a great one. Um, fermented soy is better than non-fermented. So tempa versus tofu, tempa would be the better option. Um, and then uh, protein powders, you know, there are different options you can do from a completely plant-based resource. And I do have those swaps that you can check out in the program as well. But you do need to make sure, just like everyone, that we are still addressing the eating window and getting the right types of nutrients for the body. Great question. Uh, Cogline, does sea salt have iodine? Not a significant amount. So it's usually just the iodized sea salt that has a significant source of iodine. If you are looking to um, get an increase in iodine, you can't always just get, I believe it's Lugol's um, iodine where you take like one or two drops per day. And that's a pretty big hit of iodine um, per day. So you don't need a ton of it. So uh, just regular sea salt is not a good source of iodine. Yeah. So hello, one, two, three. Are there any cons to taking sleep aid supplements? How about melatonin? So my typical recommendation for this is first address all the reasons why you can't fall asleep and then see where you can go from there. Because if you're not naturally being able to produce melatonin because your eyes are exposed to darkness or your eyes aren't exposed to darkness, you're watching um, TV, whatever it might be, you can make a lot of change from there. I'm not a big fan of the sleep aids, especially, um, or also melatonin by taking it because the body produces it. So we might as well just take advantage of what it is that the body can do, make adjustments as you can. And if you need to do something, you always have that as, um, you know, something in your back pocket that you can have. But I found that most people can make a, a lot of significant change with their sleep just by addressing these few lifestyle factors. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple more questions here. Yeah, so Kelly says, I put one drop of Lugol's iodine in my water every day. Yeah, it's a good way to get iodine as well. Hey, Scott, welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Hmm, okay, any fasting tips for a student? I'm assuming a college student, perhaps. So um, Somerville is asking about any tips for a student. Yeah. So one really big thing when you're a student is actually making sure that you are planning ahead. Um, I know that especially when I was in college, I would be on campus all day and there's not always necessarily the best options on campus. Although, you know, there is a good option that's like a fast food option that if you are on campus, you still can get. Even Chipotle is actually a surprisingly good option if you have the, um, the cauliflower rice bowls that you can get and just making sure that you're getting the protein included in there. Uh, so you aren't going to be hungry during the fasting period. And when you go to break your fast, you just really need to make sure that you are planning ahead for having something substantial to break your fast with. So if you have a Chipotle on campus, go for that and just make sure you're using cauliflower rice. So it's not highly insulin spiking instead of regular rice um, or just going for the burrito bowl options without the rice, make it more of a salad. Uh, another great option is having a smoothie that you keep in a thermos 
and you can bring that with you on the go and just give it a shake before you go to drink it. Because smoothies are great, especially with class, because you can drink it during the class and, and it's not um, an issue. You know, you're allowed to drink water during class, so you should be able to sneak in a smoothie and just put it in a thermos. Um, but those are definitely two good, good things to remember. Make sure that you are actually prepared for how to break your fast, especially if you're going to be on campus all day. Okay, so this is a great question. So now, Melly, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, I'm lacto-vegetarian and I work at a dairy. Does fresh cow or goat milk have the same protein as meat? Actually, yeah. And um, dairy it tends to be a better protein than meat. So if you have dairy as an option and if you're um, not lactose sensitive, uh, then that is a really great option that you can use. I would just recommend going for the more protein um, concentrated forms of dairy. So you get more bang for your buck with that. So being like Greek yogurt versus regular yogurt or um, having halloumi, for example, or cheese, the options that are going to be lower in lactose and higher in protein are going to be better sources, obviously, of protein. And in fact, there's there's a lot of research, especially um, around dairy based proteins um, and how it can affect muscle growth and actually be a really great tool. Uh, so it is something that is a great option if you are lacto vegetarian. Um, just look for those protein optimized sources. I see a couple questions about weight being stuck. I did go over that um, about like maybe five or 10 minutes ago if you want to rewind. I'm going to answer like one, one or two, maybe one more question. Okay. Math Bell says, can I take long walks every day or do we have to rest at least one day a week? When it comes to walking, unless you have an injury, it's hard to overdo it. So it's better to get moving um, every day with walking, especially if you don't have an injury. And if your body is fine getting in that walk, the more, the better. Uh, it's hard. The reason why it's hard to overdo is because it's not such a strenuous exercise like strength training where it requires a lot of muscle recovery. Um, so if you can get in more walking, it's likely going to be better than just being sedentary. Unless again, unless you have an injury, then of course that would be counterproductive. Okay. So Leone, will consuming too much protein turn to fat? It's hard to overdo protein. So especially from an animal based source, it's very hard to overdo protein. Likely you're going to be under consuming protein more than you will be overdoing it. They've done overfeeding studies where they try and get people to overfeed on just pure animal based proteins found that most people, in fact, I don't believe there's a single person that was able to over consume animal based proteins because it has such a strong satiety signal. So protein causes the body to release the um, satiety hormone peptide YY. And that is when you eat enough of it, enough of the protein to uh, signal that peptide YY is such a strong signal that it can help um, make it so you don't even want to continue eating because you're so full and satisfied. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. I just make sure that if you are concerned, you're getting from a whole food source and not a, you know, like a protein powder. So this is where if you're just having protein powders at all of your meals, it can be a little bit different in how it's going to be affecting the body, especially because it doesn't have natural sources of fat the way that other proteins will. Um, so you can just stick with more whole food source of protein if you are concerned about consuming too much. <laughs> um, Oops. Is protein shakes that can turn into fat? Um, just answered that one. What kind of Greek yogurt do you recommend? Full fat, grass fed, organic, unsweetened. <laughs> so look for full fat. So you're actually getting the fat component of satiety. Um, look for grass fed. So you get the vitamin K2, which is a much missed uh, vitamin that most people are not getting enough of. You need vitamin K2 to help get calcium out of the arteries and into the bones. So it helps with heart health and bone health. So you get that by having grass fed um, Greek yogurt and then unsweetened. So you make sure that you aren't getting the insulin spiked um, added sugars in there as well. So look for all that. I mean, what's funny is that I wouldn't have to say all that if uh, Greek yogurt just came as it naturally is because we take fat out of Greek yogurt. So full fat just means then it's original form. Grass fed just means it's the cows eating what they're intended to eat. So 
you have to now, unfortunately, look for all those labels just because of what we do with our food now. Yeah, or make your own Greek yogurt. Absolutely. Okay. Michelle um, says, hi from South Africa. We don't have the purity coffee on our side. What other coffee do you recommend? At the very least, look for organic so it's free of pesticides. If you can find one that is mold free as well, you can generally reach out to the company and ask their customer service um, if they actually have been lab tested. The other brand that tends to be more widely available is Bulletproof Coffee. Uh, I believe they aren't organic though. So that's why I like Purity Coffee if you are able to get it. It's a much better, higher quality option. Um, but if you can't get that, the next be best option I found is going to be um, Purity Coffee or Bulletproof Coffee. <laughs> All right, guys. So this is the last week of the Fall Intermittent Fasting Challenge. If you want to join in on the next challenge, make sure you check out that um, email subscribe down the description below. It's where I share all the information first is with the Monday newsletter. I promise I won't spam you guys. It's really just Monday that I send out something, give you guys free tips, and also let you know about the challenges that are coming up. There's some really exciting things coming up for the next challenge that I've been working on this last weekend even. Um, but yeah, so I'm, thank you guys for tuning in for all of this. It's been really fun to do this challenge with you guys leading up to my wedding, which is this Friday, mind blowing. Um, but it's been fun to have you guys going along this journey with me as well. So thank you guys for being part of the fall intermittent fasting challenge. Um, and I do have that new challenge coming up. So make sure you're tuned in, make sure you get that email subscribed so you don't miss out on it. So many amazing results that A and Pete's have been able to achieve while eating meals they love and feeling great in the process. That's my goal for you guys. I want to make sure everyone can feel that way as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. I will be um, on Instagram on Wednesday going live as well. Trevor and I, my fiance and I will be sharing what we're eating for the rest of this week to help just make sure we're feeling great um, leading up to the wedding on Friday. So if you guys want to join in on that live stream, it'll be on my um, Instagram at autumnl underscore nutrition, L as in like E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. So autumn, E-L-L-E -L -L -E underscore nutrition. I'll be going live on Wednesday, I think at 9 a.m. PST as well, sharing what we're eating to so get, get a little bit of insight in there and I'll answer some more questions there. But otherwise, thanks guys for tuning in and I'll see you hopefully on Wednesday. <laughs>